today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So yesterday, the day after Christmas, uh, it was a pretty fun day of shooting Polaroids. I made a little backyard sequence as I was playing in the backyard with the kids, and uh, I even took this Polaroid Now Plus on a little drive. Uh, Polaroid sent this camera to me a few months ago, which was extremely kind of them. Um, they weren't asking for a review or anything, but I wanted to make something and just kind of pay it forward. So I thought I would take it for a drive, made a few pictures uh, on some back roads, including this one right here that we're gonna do an emulsion lift with today. Um, I made this one yesterday with the same camera and uh, I did this lift yesterday and afterwards I thought, you know, I haven't done one of these uh, in a video in years and the older video on the channel, it could use a little bit of an update. So. Uh, today I'm just going to kind of walk through the process of doing an emulsion lift in case any of you haven't seen this before. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then afterwards I'm going to be giving away both of these emulsion lifts and the Polaroid Now Plus to one of you guys. So uh, if you want to learn how to win all of that, just stick around till the end of the video. I'm using the same materials that I used in the video that I did years ago, so it's this little impossible project kit that was made specifically for doing emulsion lifts. You've got several different brushes and this pack of paper which says it's paper made for emulsion lifts. Really the key thing to keep in mind if you're looking for paper is just any kind of watercolor paper that you can get wet. Um, you can do emulsion lifts onto other materials of course, but if you're going to be putting the paper in the water, obviously the paper needs to be able to withstand that. Now the first thing we're going to do is cut open this Polaroid here. And some people do this um, basically kind of cutting the ends of the Polaroid open and then peeling it, you know, into two different pieces. Uh, me personally, I've never really had issues just cutting it out of the frame right here. Uh, maybe there is a rhyme or reason for doing it the other way, but this isn't necessarily like a strict tutorial on how to do all of this because the way I do this and a lot of things is just sort of feeling it out and uh, you know not sweating the technique too much. Now this was shot yesterday but I imagine it's not going to come apart quite as easily as yesterday's lift was. Uh, I came home and did this lift pretty quickly after I actually went out and shot the pictures. So the emulsion just really came right off of there pretty easily. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, so this is basically that little plastic material that you're uh, used to seeing in your, you know, traditional Polaroids. But once we uh, get some water on this, some really hot water, I have about 90 degrees Celsius water. Uh, in the previous video that I did in the past, it took a lot longer because I was just kind of microwaving some water and heating it up that way. It definitely wasn't hot enough. Uh, yesterday I did about 85 degrees Celsius for this one and that seemed to do the trick. So we'll see how this goes. We're just gonna pour around and then right on top. Basically what we wanna do is separate all of this from the actual piece of plastic and then we're going to take that and basically transfer it over top of paper. You can see it's starting to crack and kind of lift up in the corners there. So shooting with freshly shot Polaroids that definitely is going to make a difference. I think maybe the ideal way to go about this is using something like an instant lab, something where you can you know print photos on this kind of film rather than actually shooting it with the camera and being on site. Taking a digital file, using the app, transferring that photo to this, um, that could just open up a lot of possibilities, but then you know that kind of opens up the conversation of, you know, is that uh, taking away from it in any way because sort of the nature of Polaroids being a one of one, you know, that, that's a big part of the charm for a lot of people. Uh, and I think myself included, but at the same time for something like this, um, this is really just about having fun and being creative and just experimenting. And I think using an instant lab to just open up the possibilities for something like this, um, I actually think that sounds like a lot of fun. And I think I might pick one up sometime soon just to uh, kind of experiment with different things. Now it's really starting to lift up and I like to kind of push water underneath those little pockets and you can see this little bubble where it's kind of lifted up right there. 
as I push water in there, it's filling that up and then pushing basically the edge of this all the way back. So I guess as I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go ahead and pay some bills and tell you about our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace's service for years, way before they ever decided to sponsor the channel, and I've done that because they really are the best all-in-one place to build a website. No matter what you need for you know, showing a portfolio or running an online store, sending out an email newsletter, everything is built right into their service, which is great. You don't have to try and you know, find all of these solutions in a bunch of different places. What makes it so easy is all of their templates are ready to go, but they're still customizable, so you can kind of tweak things and make it your own. And it's really easy, but if you ever need help with anything, they have 24 seven award-winning customer service. So if you want to try Squarespace out for yourself, you can do this entirely free at squarespace.com. But if you want to save some money, go to squarespace.com slash Matt Day, and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that little bit will save you some money and that continues to support the channel here. So thank you and thank you Squarespace. We're just about there now and I like where this is going because this kind of flipped over to the side that it needs to be, which was not my plan, but that worked out perfectly. I just need to get this little edge off here and then we're gonna get some paper in here and try to lift. Now some people, and it even says in the guide that comes with these brushes, to use this end of the brush and just scoop it out of the water and plop it into a different dish. And that to me just seems so flagrant. <laughs> I try to be a bit more gentle if I can, so. Rather than just ripping it out of the water, um, I like to try and get the paper underneath it and uh, transfer it this way. So we're gonna start in this dish, get this onto the paper, and then from there, take it out and put it into a different dish that has some room temperature water. Because this water is still, it's not as hot as it was, but it's definitely still warm. And when the water is really warm, uh, the emulsion really, uh, it just kind of goes all over the place and it's, it's a lot harder to manage and uh, sort of control. So the goal here is to just get it as flat and onto this sheet as I can. That's looking much better. And then we're gonna take this out and switch dishes. Just take some time. It's best not to rush this part. There we go. That's gonna work just fine. I can get this all smoothed out, but we're gonna swap this out. Get this all queued up, okay. All right. So this water is actually a lot colder than I thought it was. So we're gonna add a little bit of hot water just to kind of balance that out. Give myself at least a little bit of flexibility in this. That's still not enough. <laughs> no, that's perfect. There we go. That's what I needed. See, at first it was too cold and so it didn't really move. Just warming it up a little bit. That softened the emulsion up. This one corner is being really stingy. It's not wanting to come undone. Or is it just torn? Oh, it's just torn. That's why it's not unfolding. There's nothing there to unfold. Okay, kind of do the same thing on all four sides. I start by kind of just placing my thumb in the middle and then I just kind of dip that opposite end, trying to get the water underneath it. That way I can just really flatten things out, get myself to a good starting point. And I try to do this as much as I can in the center of this. I try to get myself as lined up as I can earlier on, but it's really tough to do at times. I am by no means, oh. 
As I was saying, I am by no means an emotion lift expert. I just have a lot of fun with them. Okay, we're almost there, I think. I know one of you watching are gonna have the proper technique for this, so just tell me in the comments. What I'm trying to do is get the image to just shift down this way just a little bit, and I, I keep thinking if I get enough water underneath it, it'll kinda glide down with it, but I don't think I'm getting enough water underneath it, and every time, <laughs> It should be close enough. I can't help myself, but just pick at it a little bit more and I end up messing it up. Grab this little brush here. I kind of want to play around with some of the actual landscape here. I really like the top portion of this frame where it peeled like really, really nice and you can almost kind of see where the frame sat right here. But, why not <laughs> go ahead and just mess it up? I kind of like the way the tree, uh, I kind of pushed the frame to kind of form around this branch a little bit to kind of let that sort of dictate the edge of the frame. I would love to be able to do that here, but I don't really have the same same stuff to work with, but I am going to play around with these sort of top branches and I can roll this back and then push. Some of these really fine point brushes, it's really easy to tear the emulsion right there. Someone in the neighborhood either got a new lawnmower for Christmas or their Honda Civic got a sick tune-up. I don't like what I did with the bottom of the frame, so just kind of pulling some of that back. I think we're going to leave it at that. I think this will do it. So, uh, yeah, if you've never seen an emulsion lift done before, I hope this was fun to watch. I hope you enjoyed the process. Definitely try it out for yourself. Uh, if you would like to win this Emulsion Lift, this Emulsion Lift, and the Polaroid Now Plus, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and sign up for my email newsletter. Starting at the end of January, I'll be sending out a monthly recap just to kind of keep you guys up to date on what I've been working on, what I've been enjoying. Uh, just a fun way for me to just keep in touch with all of you guys. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, and if you want to win any of this, sign up for that down below. But most importantly, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who have supported me this year. Uh, this was by far the most upside down, uh, confusing, challenging, and scary year of my life. And this past month or so, I feel like I've sort of turned a new leaf. And um, it's been hard, but it's been really good. And I... I'm finally making videos that I enjoy making again. I think that comes through in the videos. A lot of you have shared with me that, uh, you know, you've been enjoying the recent videos and sort of the different change of pace and style. And uh, I've just been making videos that I enjoy making and that I want to make for the first time in a really long time. And 
I could talk all about that, and I thought about making a, you know, what have, what have I learned from 2021, or, you know, I've, a whole bunch of videos came to mind, and I thought, I just want to sit down, make some art, give something uh, back to one of you guys, and, uh, yeah, just end the video with that, just saying thank you. Um, I appreciate all the support my family does as well, and I am truly excited for 2022. So I love you guys. I hope you all have a safe and happy new year. And I'll see you guys soon.